Well, Sylvain, thank you so much for joining. Where are you Zooming in from today? Good afternoon, Brendan. I'm, uh, I'm Zooming in from uh, Montreal, and I'm happy to report that I'm sitting at the office. I'm not sure for how long, but uh, very happy to be at the office today. Uh, it's, our, uh, it's our third week, and it's, uh, it's great to, uh, to come back here uh, and, and, and focus even more than before. Yeah, I, I'm jealous. I, I have not been in an office in a little bit. Um, could you start maybe just by explaining your role at Ivanhoe Cambridge and just how you as a company across many different business segments think about sustainability and how it integrates into what you do? So uh, my, my title is uh, Chief Investment and Innovation Officer. And, uh, and so um, we decided... Um, about 18 months ago that um, ESG and what we refer to uh, here as a corporate social responsibility, and I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute, but uh, we feel like it's very much part of, uh, of investment today and uh, real estate investment. We're, we're the real estate arm of Caisse de Depot and Placement du Québec, which is um, uh, advisor investor on behalf of many Quebec pension funds. And so we have, um, I think we have uh, an important, important social role to play uh, in on this topic. Um, it's uh, more and more important, we have to be uh, responsible investors. And, uh, and so we don't want to to have that, um, that focus uh, separate from the investment. So so uh, we added the uh, under innovation, uh, the uh, the corporate social responsibility, which which includes ESG, obviously. So uh, uh, we we have um, we we are a global investor uh, in real estate. Uh, we we have several uh, business units that are split either geography or uh, asset class, and um, and we uh, we have. Uh, a new person in charge, a senior person in charge of, uh, of uh, CSR, uh, who's actually now sitting in Paris, so, um, and, uh, uh, and getting involved with all the business units and trying to move the needle, uh, trying to do more um, and, uh, and do it more often and try to uh, yeah, move the needle. Uh, do what we can to to improve uh, the the overall um, many many different buckets as you know uh, that are part of uh, of ESG. So we're trying to do to do more and uh, and putting efforts and and direct link to investments uh, to do that. And you know, what's so interesting is I, I just have to comment that you know the the role of chief investment officer and chief innovation officer. I mean, so much of what as, as you know, I think is inspiring about what real estate companies can do now is, is really seeing that these two things are blurry, right? That innovation and investment are, are kind of one and the same. And there's this almost orthogonal intersection with sustainability because that is, that is both about now being a good investor. It's also about understanding tech and it's also about building a sustainable business for the future. Um, and maybe that's a good segue into, you know, how do you think the real estate industry should be uh, thinking about its role, its responsibility in the climate crisis, right? Real estate is a very contributive industry from a, uh, or from a consumptive in industry from a uh, energy perspective, but also with respect to CO2 emissions, it's, it's quite substantial. How should the real estate industry be framing its role? I think um, as an investor, um, and um, and it's true for real estate, but really for any kind of investment, uh, to have a successful investment, certainly in real estate, you need to have a stability uh, around your cash flow and and your a stability uh, around attracting tenants. And we we find, and it's true with with COVID nineteen more than ever. We feel like a lot of uh, important trends have been accelerating. Uh, so working from home and uh, e-commerce, for instance, but it, it kind of forces us to, to stop and think about what the, the true end user uh, really wants. And um, so the end user of an office building is not 
um, is not a corporate tenant with who you sign a, a long-term lease. It's the actual employees. And uh, pre-pandemic, as you know, there were lots of uh, tenants, a lot of our tenants that were uh, seeking our help to attract and retain talent. And uh, especially with the uh, younger generation, the millennials, uh, you know, will have... Uh, um, we'll have people kind of come in uh, and uh, and um, and try to to have a, a job with us, and and that's one of the questions they typically ask. You know, what are you doing vis-a-vis -vis ESG? What are you doing with sustainability? It's very important for them, and and it's becoming part of your brand, your corporate brand. So whatever you say, your corporate values are. Uh, need to be matched by your actions. Uh, and so I think the real estate industry in general has been, I think, you know, it's very conventional, very, you know, older fashion. We're used to long-term stuff, you know, thinking the same way for a long time. And, um, and so I think we need to, to, to remind ourselves that very soon there there'll be tenants that might not sign with with a particular building or a particular landlord if they feel like they haven't been doing enough on certain fronts and certain esg fronts and i think it's going to be fairly binary you know um you know either you do or you don't and uh, and so you have to demonstrate what you're trying and, and what you're you're actually doing um, you know, real estate buildings uh, are a very big contributor of, um, you know, the problem, the, the environmental problems that, that we have globally. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, older buildings are, are very much polluting. And, and so I think it's going to be a decision making aspect that certain companies will make when, when choosing a building in the future. And, and the same with employees. And the same, I guess, ultimately with, um, you know, lenders, I would, you know, we, we, um, we are a large shareholder of the company Jacina in France, who is, um, you know, pushing a lot of initiatives uh, around ESG and, and uh, they were able to demonstrate that actually uh, it can be economically and financially very interesting and very viable uh, even on the financing side, you know, there's some uh, lenders now that will have kind of a green, um, you know, call it green bucket, you know, and, and will actually uh, offer you better terms and conditions if, if you can demonstrate what your, your building and, and what your assets are actually uh, doing or, or, or not doing. So um, I think even financially, uh, if we were led to believe that it might be less um, uh, profitable, I, I think even that uh, will not be true very soon. In fact, you know, uh, like I said, I just mentioned one case where, um, you know, green, green financing is, is in place and at better terms and conditions than a regular uh, building, a regular conventional construction. So, um, I think um, whether it's for corporate values or whether it's for um, financial considerations, I think, um, you know, real estate uh, players and investors will have to, 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 to increase and improve uh, their role uh, on that front. Yeah. And since you brought up uh, Jacina, I was actually having a conversation with Mecca, the CEO there for another conference. And she used this frame in describing kind of how the real estate industry is kind of reimagining itself and its role and responsibility. And we were talking about how, to some extent, it feels like more than ever before, real estate owners need to be sociologists, right? They, they, they have a hand in shaping what people do, how they live their lives, how our cities function, how they work in ways that I, I think was not necessarily obvious pre-COVID. And, and that's one of the interesting things. It feels like COVID has kind of almost forced real estate owners to internalize a, a kind of responsibility about the hand they play in public health, which is obviously, again, a collective action problem. 
And it feels like there's some corollaries, right, with, with climate change, which is, again, a, a collective action problem. There are externalities. Everyone needs to work together. And we now are almost acutely aware of how important it is to have a real estate owner that a real estate owner that takes public health seriously. And I'm curious if you think there's lessons to be learned from that, meaning what we're living through right now might affect a change in how real estate owners self-conceptualize. I think so. I hope so. Um, at our end, we. Um... At this time last year, we felt like, uh, okay, it's the end of a decade. We've been, um, you know, this is year 10 of a pretty good run, you know, since uh, the 2008-9 crisis. And uh, we felt like the uh, market was kind of slowing down. And uh, we were noting um, certain trends that simply got accelerated by COVID-19. Uh, you know, people working from home that that's been, you know, happening for a long time, but because of uh, technology, you know, you would see it more and more. And, and in certain cities where it's hard to commute and it, it's long to commute, uh, people would be attracted by that. And it, it's particularly true with uh, the millennial generation. Um, with, with COVID, we, um, we ended up having a lot of new users of, um, about, uh, you know, online, uh, purchases simply because, you know, you had no choice in certain cases. And so, um, you know, to Mecca's point about, uh, the, the social aspect of it, you know, we, again, I think we, we tend to forget what is it that we do here, you know, as a real estate owner investor you know we we own a we own uh you know buildings which are re really kind of empty shells and we're renting space to people who want to be in your space you know are willing to pay to be there are willing to pay to come back uh hopefully are willing to pay even more uh from one year to the other uh and i think not sure if it's lessons learned, but certainly lessons learning is um, what is it that you have to offer? Why, you know, why go to an office? Right. right. It needs to be unique. There needs to be something differentiated with what we're all living through right now. And, and I think, um, so I think um, COVID is, is forcing us is forcing a lot of companies to kind of stop, maybe take the opportunity to reinvent themselves a little bit, strategically uh, think about what they're about, you know, think about purpose and, and you know, vision and mission statements. Uh, it's a good time to do that. And I think you, you have a lot of interest on, uh, on ESG and, and, and climate as well, you know, uh, what I find is most investors don't know um, where to start, you know, how to start. And, uh, but um, most of them know and want to do more. And, and I think sometimes um, it takes, uh, you know, a crisis, a recession, uh, uh, you know, a, an important event that uh, brings uncertainty uh, to your business model, it, 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 it takes something like that to, uh, to look at, at everything uh, that you're doing. Uh, when, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the motto, uh, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. I think a lot of companies were doing just fine for, for many years. And, um, but now as people have been sitting at home for six months, um, and in some cases by themselves, uh, and being a little bit lost and uncertain about the future, it's actually the right frame of mind to uh, get them to think outside the box, think differently, think about what else we should be doing, what we should be stopping. Um, so I think it's, um, it's an opportunity, actually, uh, I find to, to do that. Uh, we, we have made changes that we might not have uh, done as quickly if it wasn't for COVID. 
Uh, obviously, there are many things that we haven't been able to do, um, but uh, or has you know slowed down. But that shouldn't impact you know strategic thinking, strategic directions. Certainly, for us, it's a, it's a strategic pillar, and uh, we 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 have formalized it you know last fall. And we we hired a, a head, and we we you know reorganized you know our teams, and like I said, you know it's very much part now of of who we are, and um, you know there are multiple uh, aspects to to ESG uh, and 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 CSR, and and obviously you know sustainability and um, and the climate is is key, you know, uh, but. To me, it, it goes back to um, to corporate brand. You know, it needs to be part of who you are. And, and how do you think about? You know, you use this phrase of real estate owners. I think previously had this frame of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? The, you're in the business of selling space, like that is what you do. And I'm curious how you think about. Um, technology investment as, as falling within that, meaning it's obviously very different for real estate companies to invest in climate tech. And I highlight that because a lot of the times when we speak to real estate companies, um, we hear things like, well, we have a sustainability program um, and these buildings are going carbon neutral. And when you kind of press on it, 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 it clearly is important work. Um, but when you think about the quantum that's already spent on offsets, and, and to some extent, it's like the reason we need to invest in technology is because we've spent so much on offsets historically. How do you think technology and climate tech investment needs to play a role for real estate companies going forward? Well, I think it's, uh, it's directly uh, tied uh, to it. So, so if you want to, you know, if you want to do more, you have to go through uh, technology, I, I think. Just in general, uh, real estate companies, real estate investors, like I said, were very, um, you know, very old fashioned, very traditional. You know, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I used to kind of kid around. I don't think you can see it now. I hope, I hope not. But uh, you know, not long ago, I, you know, I was saying to colleagues one day, I said, through my, you know, glass behind me, I can see. A photo photocopier in a filing cabinet, you know, in magazines and newspapers, and this is exactly what it looked like. I'm sure you know, 20 years ago, right? Yeah. So, um, but that's what I mean. But if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So, so um, you know, if you sign a, a long-term lease, you know, and you sign for a 10-year lease, for a while, I find that owners were turning almost into lenders and tenants were almost like borrowers so you would you know as long as you made your payment every month everything was fine uh, now it's more complicated than that and, and, and i think um you know technology in in general plays such an important role in our life today uh, we all have our you know you know, intelligent, you know, phones and, and laptops and, and iPads. And, and it seems sometimes when you, uh, you know, I, I heard a comment from, a, from someone I know who said, you know, when, when I, I come in the office uh, in the morning, I feel like um, I'm going back 10, 10 years, you know. Uh, I feel like the level of technology is not a par to my usual, normal day life. And, and so imagine the younger generations, you know, sensing and, and, and seeing that, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm back to, you know, corporate branding and what you're about. So if you're going to invest in, uh, in, in the climate tech, obviously, um, you know, everything is, is, is tied together. You know, I, I got the, 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 the word innovation and in my title simply because you cannot do without the other, uh, one without the other. So they're bore, both of them are slanted towards the future. And you, you know, we invest in innovation. We try to innovate 
in investments. Uh, ultimately, it's, um, it's a deep uh, way of, you know, of investing. And, and, uh, and, and although it can be, you know, I, sometimes I, you know, I'll, I'll joke around saying what we call innovation uh, is uh, in some cases just catching up to what's actually being done, you know, or what's being offered out there. So it's, it's not innovation for yeah. us. It is. <laughs> and, and so I think, you know, we're not the only ones. So I guess the first thing is you need to actually, you know, stay humble and recognize that. And then you need to start somewhere. And, uh, and if it's part of your uh, DNA, you're gonna, you're gonna do do more and, and and more often yeah and and it, it's interesting to hear you talk about that about how technology investment fits in with innovation because it's something you know i've always said which is you know just looking at what comes out of the innovation economy you miss the insights and you miss the early access and you miss that edge that that, that really differentiates you and I, to some extent i feel like prop tech as a category it's come to recognize that, that real estate companies, obviously they have an imperative to invest into technology. And when you look at that in, in climate tech, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I, I sometimes hear responses from, you know, heads of sustainability or any real estate company that says, well, show me technologies that are adoptable today. And what I always say is it's not about today. The, the, the issue is the reason some of these technologies are not adoptable or are not cost effective today is because you didn't invest five years ago, right? So like we are in some ways digging ourselves out of an R&D hole and it can become kind of a, almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy where if you don't invest in something, you don't see the technology that's not adoptable. And what I think is inspiring about, you know, real estate owners that really get that is it breaks that cycle, right? Because you are investing in the very technologies that you know, you see earlier, you get exposed to earlier, influence your business earlier, so that when they're imminently adoptable, you adopt them, you get exposed to them. Um, and it, it's hard sometimes to convince real estate owners of that. I'm curious, was that a, was that a top-down decision? Was that a consensus decision? How did that happen at, at Ivanhoe Cambridge? Like that realization, how did that happen? A good question. I think, um, I think it's um, it's a I guess it's a bit of both. Uh, I think you uh, you start realizing that um, you know the world has changed. The world is changing. That you're getting late adjusting, and um, you start um, to go outside your organization to get help to get advice. And you realize that there, there are a lot of things that uh, you, you don't know, you know, and, and sometimes we say, you know, know, know what you don't know. And, and I think a lot of companies, and it's true in many things, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So uh, because we've been doing certain things a certain way forever. So oh. I think... Just to point out, that's a very humble point of view in the real estate industry, because sometimes you get the sense that real estate owners think they can do everything, right? They can, they can kind of internalize everything. And I think there is kind of when you approach technology innovation for anyone, for a real estate company, for a venture capitalist, for an entrepreneur, it's hum you're always humbled by how much you don't know. And that, that's kind of what makes technology profound and powerful. And you have to come to it with that humility to really get it. I'll, uh, I'll just, uh, if you allow me, I'll just plug uh, a book that I, I've uh, actually listened to, um, you know, a while ago, and, and I, I keep, you know, re-listening to it. It's called A More Beautiful Question. And in there, there is a, a, a comment that I, I like about uh, what it means to become an expert at something. Hmm. And uh, they're explaining that, uh, you know, young kids, you know, will ask thousands of questions and anybody who, who has or has had a five-year-old knows that it's true. 
Um, and eventually when you start to know things, you stop asking questions. You don't ask questions as much. And then when you've been doing something for a while, you become a senior person in that role, i.e. some kind of an expert. And, and, and that usually means that you get almost in a teaching mode. You know, you, you, uh, you get to explain things to people, you get to, to, uh, to teach. And that's exactly where you stop learning. And that, that's exactly where you become more and more, um, you know, passe in your thinking. And, and I believe that a lot of companies kind of went under, you know, very, very large companies that went under because of that. You know, you feel you have the top of the mountain and, you know, maybe the lack of humility catches you. You know, it's, it's, tough, to, it's tough to become number one at something. It's tougher to stay number one. And, and so to me, humility right now is, is key in, in many things, you know, like stay humble. You don't know everything and, and make sure that you, you partner up with people that are, you know, wiser and, 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 and more intelligent than you, uh, in, in, in many fields and in, in many respects, um, see my role more as a generalist. Than, than a specialist. So I expect people we partner up with to be to know more than I on 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 the, on their um, field or expertise or their their industry, and then to keep up, you know, to keep up with what's happening. And so to invest in, in you know whether it's prop tech or whether it's anything that you don't know too much about. Uh, we will typically, um, you know, put toe in the water, say, and, and we'll, we'll try to, to learn about that, that industry or that geography or that asset class. And, um, and, and yeah, you know, you should just, you know, shut up and learn, you know, and, uh, and, and I think it's, you know, in technology, uh, more than anything else, I think, you know, because we've been late uh, technologically, we have lots of catching up to do. So, uh, and, and we have uh, definitely a lot of humility to put on the table. You know, to me, that's an important, uh, it's an important aspect for people to remember, in my opinion. And what's so interesting is I totally agree with you. I mean, doing something different and having that humility, that, that's leadership, right? That, that's what leading a business is. And I, I always think about this example of, you know, when we started Fifth Wall and we were going to real estate corporates and we were saying, you're a real estate corporate, you should invest money in a venture capital fund. When we would talk to oftentimes CTOs or, or CIOs, they'd be like, no, that, that's not what we do. And there were only two groups that really understood it. The CEO, who didn't know a lot about tech typically, but believed in it, had the humility to know that his team might not totally know. And very young people, right, who also had the humility and maybe the inexperience to believe there was a different way. It was always from the very top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is it's the corollary, you know, to the topic of, of, of this conference on sustainability. I, I find that when I talk sometimes to heads of sustainability, Oftentimes they're, they've been doing the same thing for, for years. And many of those things are really important. They're, they're really important work, but sometimes there are different ways. And I think tech and innovation and, and what's happening in climate tech in, in particular is one of those new vectors, right? That, that kind of you need. And it, it seems to again, be stemming from leadership, like the top leadership of an organization that may not have previously focused on sustainability and the younger generation again, the same dynamic is happening. And I think you kind of hit the, hit the nail on the head. It's like, it is humility. It's the humility to know that there might be another way and that technology is confusing, but to some extent, that's not a reason not to do it. Or the reason that you haven't done something before isn't the reason, isn't the reason that 
you should adhere to as an organization, right? It's hard to stay great. A hundred percent. I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sylvain, this has been so interesting. Um, I always enjoy our conversations. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your views and obviously your, your leadership and kind of how you've thought about sustainability as being so core to Ivanhoe Cambridge. So it's really inspiring. Thank you, Brendan. Always a pleasure. Anytime. <laughs>